Hey guys, today I want to show you what has been my favorite build so far in Elden Ring. In previous Souls games, we've had the ability to transform into a variety of different dragons, but never with this much power, and never with this many abilities. In Elden Ring, the dragon powers are very satisfying, do a ton of damage, and are viable in any situation. Depending on the enemy you're fighting, you'll have access to fire, magic, frostbite, scarlet rot, and pure physical damage. Since Dragon Communion scales with Arcane, you'll have access to weapons with bleed damage as well. You'll be able to counter even the most resistant enemies. Also, if you use the seal that's in your right hand, you can use the breath attacks in midair, which can give you a better shot at hitting a dragon's head, which deals more damage. In some situations, this can even cause the enemy's attacks to miss. This build is so fun to use that once you try it, you won't be able to go back to playing normally again. So without further ado, let's hop into the build. For stats here on the right, the important numbers to look out for are 45 Faith and 45 Arcane. I went with this because it's a soft cap for incant scaling with the Dragon Communion Seal. For weapons, I use the Scavenger's Curve Sword to apply Seppuku for the Blood Buff, the Commander's Standard for the Rallying Standard Buff, and two Dragon Communion Seals to increase damage further with Dragon Communion Incantations. For armor, I use the Elden Lord Crown along with the Champion Set. If we check out the description of the Champion Pauldron, it reads, Pauldron reserved for the Badlands Bravest. Proof that the wearer has slaughtered countless foes. Following the example of their chieftain Hora Lu, the brave warriors of the Badlands shun excess adornment. The Elden Lord Crown on the other hand belongs to Godfrey, first Elden Lord whose true form is Hora Lu, the chieftain that the champion's pauldron is referring to. This is why I went with this combination of armor. Imagine a young Godfrey roaming the Badlands using his dragon powers. Another option you could wear is the Drake Knight armor set, which looks pretty cool and has good resistance. For talismans, I use the Ritual Sword Talisman, which you can switch to the Red Feather Branch Sword if you want to play at lower health, the Phlox Canvas Talisman, the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, in this last talisman I switch depending on the type of damage I want to deal. The Kindred of Rot's Exaltation increases damage for x seeks Decay. The Fire Scorpion Charm increases damage for Theodorix's Magma and Aegil's Flame. And the Magic Scorpion Charm increases damage for Smorok's Glintstone Breath and Borealis's Mist. I do the same thing with the Wondrous Physic. Depending on the damage type I want to deal, I can switch out the Twiggy Crack Tear for a Flame or Magic Shrouding Crack Tear to go along with the Cerulean Hidden Tear which gives us about 10 free seconds of FP. For consumables, I did some testing against plastic USACs, and found out that the Blood Boil Aromatic increases the damage of all of these attacks, including the Breath Attacks. In some of these fights, I used Flame Grammy Strength instead, which will still work pretty well, especially with the Fire Attacks. Now on to the buffs. First, I'll use Blood Boil Aromatic. Then I'll use the Commander Standard buff, then I'll use Seppuku with the Scavenger's Curve Sword for the Blood Buff. And then I heal to get back to full health for the Ritual Sword Talisman Buff. Then I move closer to the boss and use my Wondrous Physic right before I'm ready to attack. All of this in combination will allow for a very solid damage boost, especially if you use the element that the boss is weak to. So yeah, that's pretty much everything. I hope you enjoy.